Hello everyone, you are watching another episode of Military TV. In today's session, we will take a look at the T-72 tank which is considered as the backbone of the Russian army. Despite the fact that the Russian T-72 tank is approximately 50 years old, it still serves many roles on the battlefield and may represent the Russian army's backbone. During the Cold War, this tank was designed to overwhelm NATO and the US by scooting across the crucial Fulda Gap in Germany to hit friendly forces decisively. Anyway, before we move further, let's take a look at the general characteristics of this tank. The T-72 is a Soviet main combat tank family that was introduced in 1969. It evolved from the T-64, which was hampered by excessive expenditures and a reliance on immature developmental technologies. This tank has numerous design traits in common with other Soviet origin. However, some of them are considered as deficiencies when compared to NATO tanks. The T-72 is extremely lightweight at 41 tons and very small compared to Western main battle tanks. It has a capacity to load a crew of three, including commander, gunner, and driver. Moreover, about 25,000 of the T-72 tanks have been manufactured, and refurbishment has enabled many to remain in service for decades. This tank was considered as a second-generation main battle tank which has been in service to several countries during conflicts. Around 2,000 of the T-72 versions are still currently operated by Russia, while many more are in storage. Additionally, this tank was widely exported to around 30 countries, including Finland, India, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yugoslavia, and was replicated elsewhere both with and without licenses. In regard to its production history, the first series production of T-72 Object 172 and began in July at UKBM in Nizhny Tagil. Nevertheless, due to difficulties in getting the factory organized for the change in production from T-64 to T-72, only 30 completed tanks were delivered in 1973. Followed by some troubles in 1974 where out of a state production quota of 440, only 220 were officially declared, with the actual number of completed tanks being close to 150. Consequently, substantial investment in tooling was initiated. Only after modernization could the factory begin full-scale production of the T-72. Nizhny Tagil produced the tank in various modifications until 1992. From the 1970s until the Soviet Union's fall in 1991, the T-72 was the most frequent tank deployed by the Warsaw Pact. Eventually, numerous versions of the T-72 have been in production for decades, and the standards for its armor have varied significantly. The first T-72 tanks used homogeneous cast steel armor with spaced armor technology, which provided moderate protection by 1970s standards. In 1979, the Soviets began producing T-72 modifications with composite armor in the front of the turret, and the front of the hull comparable to the T-64 composite armor. Late in the 1980s, T-72 tanks in Soviet inventory and many others around the world were equipped with reactive armor tiles. Since the T-72 is protected by composite armor, some sources mentioned that front armor of the T-72 is also comparable to the 410mm of rolled homogeneous armor RHA. At the time of its introduction, the arc of the T-72 could withstand any 105mm projectiles at ranges greater than 500 meters. The T-72's front armor was resistant against anti-tank guided missiles like the Dragon and Toe anti-tank guided missiles. Considering the armament, this main battle tank is fitted with a 125mm smoothbore gun. This gun fired rounds at a much higher muzzle velocity than Western 105mm rifled guns. The gun is equipped with a new carousel type autoloader. Meanwhile, the previous autoloader fitted on the T-64 was unreliable and had a number of other problems. Despite being more reliable, the T-72's autoloader was confirmed to be slower than the one installed at the T-64. The T-72 has a maximum rate of fire up to 8 rounds per minute and the gun can be manually loaded at a rate of 1 to 2 rounds per minute if necessary. A total of 39 rounds are carried for the main gun. Effective range of fire with armor piercing fin stabilized discarding cybot rounds is about 2,000 to 3,000 meters during the day and 850 to 1,300 meters at night. Furthermore, its secondary armament consists of Quaxel 7.62mm and 12.7mm machine guns which are installed on the top of the roof in the open mount. In comparison to the Western standards, this tank seemed to have a poor night vision capability. This was claimed as a major concern of this tank. Powered by a V46 diesel engine and developing 780 horsepower, the T-72 has improved suspension over its predecessor. It employs six larger road wheels, similar to those of the T-55 and T-62 series tanks. 
This main battle tank is also equipped with a self-entrenching blade and is able to dig a trench for 12 to 40 minutes, depending on the ground type. Importantly, what seems to be the main strength of the T-72 is its upgrade package to the modern T-72B3 version. With dozens of versions up to the present T-72B3 and T-72B3M variants are currently considered third-generation tanks. The updated T-72B3M has been deployed by Russian forces since 2014, and some saw combat in Ukraine and Syria. The T-72s is designed for export, and the Iraqi military was the first to purchase 2,000 of them in 2009. Anyway, let's see the T-72B3 which is the upgraded version and considered to be the most popular model in the Russian military with over 1,300 in service. This upgraded version has modernized armor and improved engines. It can be noticed that the T-72B3 is protected by modern contact 5 explosive reactive armor, which is also found on the T-90A this can protect against anti-tank missiles and rockets. Since it has a shorter shape, the low turret profile also provides superior protection. The V-92's 2F is a diesel engine that produces over 1,100 horsepower. On paved roads with a range of 311 miles, the top speed is 43 miles per hour. There is also a redesigned steering mechanism that provides for improved mobility than the base T-72. Regarding its operational history, the T-72 was never used in the Afghanistan war. However, it has been used by the Russian army in the fighting during the First and Second Chechen Wars and the Russo-Georgian War. The T-72 has been in extensive use in the Syrian Civil War by the Syrian Arab Army since 2011. Quite a few captured units have been used by anti-government forces, including the rebel Free Syrian Army and jihadist groups such as the Islamic Front and the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. This tank was also in service at the beginning of the Iran and Iraq War. The Iraqi tank battalion was equipped with T-72s in a battle near the town of Qasr e -Shir and completely defeated an Iranian tank battalion, which consisted of chieftain tanks without incurring losses. In the opening stages of the war, Iraqi tank battalions equipped with T-72s neutralized Iranian armor in multiple engagements reportedly suffered no losses at all. Also, the Iraqi T-72MS and T-72M won a great success in the battle for Basra and the last stages of the war. Considering the current invasion of Ukraine, the Russian T-72 has seen extensive service with both sides. Russia's most numerous tanks are the T-72B3 and T-72B. These tanks have been engaged with U.S.-made FGM-148 Javelin and British, Swedish and Law anti-tank missiles. In the build-up to the invasion, Russian forces applied improvised steel grills to the top of the turret, pejoratively called cope cages in online communities. Military analysts have speculated that such grills were added in an attempt to counter the usage of top attack weapons, such as the Javelin and Law, by Ukrainian forces. Additionally, there are about 7,000 of T-72s in storage, but the Russians believe they can easily be modified to the T-72B3 version package. This means that in the coming years, the current T-72B3 variant will be a workhorse in the Russian military defense. The T-72 was designed to accompany troops, not necessarily as a hunter-killer, however the T-72B3 upgrade has elevated it to this role. Lastly, the T-72B3's armor on the top of the turret, like that of other Russian tanks, is a weakness, making it vulnerable to American Javelin anti-tank missiles. However, because of all the T-72s in reserve that can be upgraded to the more valued variant, the T-72B3 has strength in numbers. That's all for today and thanks for watching. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to share, like, comment, and the most important one is to click the subscribe button for more updates on other interesting videos.